Okay, the crash bait's going to the cold face yet again. Uh, unfortunately, we picked a day when uh, someone's drilling the roads a bit out there, so there will be some sounds. But um, yeah, so Paul and I are going to find out what happens when uh, through holes go wrong. We've got a, a log here and an echo sounder, and there's a seacock back here that will be um, uh, breaking in various ways to find out what happens. Mm. Let's go, Paul. Okay, Chris. What, what's the plan? Well, this is quite a good example here because we've got a log fitting installed um, on the centre line of the boat where she's veed. So the flange outside is not properly in contact with the outer face of the hull and the retaining nut here, ditto. Normally if they've been over tightened and the, the flange has been uh, subject to unfair stress, the outside flange just breaks off and the whole thing pops up into the hull if it hasn't been filleted as I explained earlier. So you in, just set it up with a clean hole? Yeah, yeah. In this case I'm going to hit it with a hammer, the outside flange may shear off or may, we may be, end up with a jagged area inside the boat but we'll be able to see just how much water comes into the boat through one of these fittings. So here we go. Um, that's that's not bad, is it? That's kind of stopped. It's actually good, Chris, because there's no panic now. We can sort this leak out at, at our leisure. What drama over? It seems to have uh, just having a bung there. It's, uh, yeah, we don't have a problem anymore. Well, we have a very small problem. We have a manageable problem. Yeah, in, in the way this has, has, has worked, we've got a nice regular hole and the bung fits nicely and of course being soft wood it'll swell quite quickly too and actually makes quite a reasonable, um, certainly gets gets us out of trouble very quickly. Yeah. Um, Alright, well uh, that's the bung. There are a couple of other ideas here we're just going to play around with. This is uh, just an American product, which is sort of squeegee type cone and then we've got a towel that we're just going to ram in there. We'll try this one first. I'd say that's worked pretty well as well. It's almost a permanent repair, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm quite pleased with that one. So, last one. I think we're just going to shove a towel down there. With our broken boat hook. Let's see what happens. It's hard to know what the towel's soaking up and what's actually coming in there. That's not bad. No, I think if you leave the whatever the pole or that you're using in it to give it tension and compress it all, it'll probably work quite well. Um, I think we've been lucky with this fitting that we've got a nice regular shape that is relatively easy to seal. But with all of these, I think it's so important it gives you time to think and come up with something perhaps a bit better um, that's a little bit more permanent. I had an idea somewhere. Um, I mean, if you didn't have bones, didn't have towels, I like the other. If you had one of these. Oh my god. This is perfect actually, um, Chris, because in on the East Coast we call desinctification of uh, skin fitting going carroty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, there we go. you know, perfect. And there should <laughs> always be something on the menu for vegetarian, shouldn't there really? So let's try it. Yeah, okay. Let's go. All set? Yep. This is easy, isn't it? Um, I think this is the best of all, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Um, Except the greenest, or the yeah, oranges. Yeah, it would rot over a period of time. I I'm guess, sure and, yeah. um, Not a permanent repair by any means. No, no, but uh, it's certainly done the job um, um, better than I would have expected. So, yeah. try and get it out now. Okay, well the carrot's a winner, um, but what we have here is an unusual break, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean normally the flange will break off outside and the hole fitting comes up through the boat, in fact leaving a, a, a clean hole through the hull. So we'll actually see if we can simulate that now. I'm going to try to split the nut that's retaining this. Um, 
that's usually a more um, realistic scenario where the fitting breaks off into the boat. Important thing with these fittings is this is the nut which retains the whole body of the log housing unit into the boat. If that is fitted around the, when it's screwed up tight and bedded down properly, if a fillet of paste or epoxy is run over that nut down onto the surrounding hull, if that flange does break off externally, the whole thing stays put. It can occasionally break jagged, in which case a standard bung like yeah. that wouldn't work so well. Yeah, I think any jagged, jagged, jagged break like that, you're going to struggle to seal it from inside. And this other idea is an alternative which um, we've yet to try, but uh, would be very interesting to see um, well, this how other, practical uh, it is. This other idea being a bit left field, I uh, came up with it earlier. The idea is that we prod this out of the hole, uh, the loop floats up, um, grab with a boat hook, tie that onto it and then see if it can haul it back into the boat from underneath. <laughs> yes, it's um, it kind of goes against the KISS principle, but I think yeah, it it's does. certainly, it especially at about eight or nine knots, it might have its <laughs> problems as well. But um, yeah, let's give it a go. Okay. We have to try every... Uh... Excellent. All right, well, what I'll do then... If you could prod that out through the up, so we'll take this out. Yeah. We'll stick this one back in just so it's not gushing in. Yes. Um, so prod that out. I'll give you a shout as soon as I see the uh, the float. Grab it with a boat hook. Tie this on. Okay. So if you want to do the prodding, I'll okay. uh, get up on deck. Okay. Now this is. Um, Um, any sign of the float? Um, Not yet. Okay. Um, there's a problem. It. Um, ah. Lacking in a little bit of buoyancy in the float. Um. Let's forget that one, shall we? I, <laughs> I, I think the um, the prodder is most definitely heavier than the float can cope with, and it's just kind of hovering around under the bottom of the boat. Okay. Um, yeah. I was get probably a bit weedy under there anyway. We need a. a, a a much lighter carbon fibre prodder or something, perhaps. I think we need to forget this. Um, yeah, we could actually, we could forget it, couldn't we? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, we've um, got the bung in this one. That's that's fine. It's not not leaking anymore. Uh, we're not in the water, but uh, it wasn't leaking when we were in the water. Not a standard failure. The seacocks usually fail, and Paul's going to recreate that yeah. scenario now. That was a, a relatively easy thing to deal with, Chris, because the access was, was easy. What we've got here is a more typical installation in a heads area where the heads discharge an inlet and the sink discharge are tucked away under these um, cupboards. Um, we've got a built-in unit here and if we had a failure here um, we might not actually be able to get in there quickly enough to do what we did so simply uh, with these fittings. So let's see how that works. Yes, Um, right, well, uh, this is a typical sort of setup with the seacocks tucked away inside this unit. I think I can hear water coming in now um, under this unit, and we've got to try and stop this leak. And uh, I already feel quite nervous, really. Um, the problem being, we can't really get in there to, to do anything with this leak, so we've got to really try and break this unit up to, to make some better access. So I'm going to just quite calmly and it doesn't actually feel very calm to be perfectly honest with you um, see if I can break the front off of this to, um, to get some access It was quite 
quite frightening, even though this is a, a you know, a, a, a test. It was, um, obviously, it's, we still have very poor access. Were this an FRP moulding, of course, none of this would have been possible, and we would have been struggling to get something in here to stop the leak. Uh, you know, this is why it's so important to use the right materials. Avoid all this possible um, scenario, which is going to be rare and, and, and hopefully, you know, completely doesn't happen, but we can just avoid it. So um, just by using what are the materials we Bronze or DZR, and they will last many, many years, far in excess of the ISO standard, and we needn't worry about this kind of situation. And actually, I think that's what the public really deserve when they buy a new boat or put new fittings in. Um, they should be able to rely on these essential fittings and to a large extent forget about them other than maintenance. So that's bronze, DZR, yeah. there are some plastic ones on the market? Are yeah, good? Um, plastic seacocks are in wide use in steel boats obviously and, and in ferro boats. Excellent uh, components um, and have a similar lifespan to bronze um, and, and DZR so they are equally good. Okay, we've got the bung in there. Um, obviously, it's as the uh, the tailpipe is torn. It's not the not the best fit. So we're going to try some other ideas. Um, first of which is the humble potato. Uh, not fabulous access, I have to say. Um, let's give it a go. Let's get the bung out. Let's get the bung out. Okay, so on the humble King Edward. Mashed. Well, well better than I thought. Uh, it's a potato and it might save your life. Okay, so complete success for our potato. Mostly washed. Try this full spot. Not much space to get this one in. That's not too bad, it's still a few drips there. Okay, well the true plug seems to work pretty well, there's not too many leaks there. Obviously being spongy it kind of adopts the the torn shape of the tailpipe, so yeah, another success. Slightly more expensive than the potato. Um, but yeah, good option. Okay, uh, this one is this stuff. Stay afloat. So I've seen advertised in the US. What you're supposed to do is grab a handful of it, smack it over the broken sea cock, and uh, all is peace and joy. Two. Is our leak back? Yeah, that's the pipe. Well, that's worked well, as well. Um, it'd be nice to see how it works under a bit more pressure, but yeah, that's... That stops it completely. And again, being so greasy and just, I don't know, amorphous, it doesn't much matter what the shape is. Another fun day on the crash boat. Uh, I think we learned a lot. Uh, the red sponge was, uh, red conical sponge was interesting and the putty stuff was uh, was great. Thanks very much for joining us, Paul. Did you imagine vegetables would uh, be no, as effective I, as were? No, absolutely not. I laughed when you first told me, but it was a good, very green, biodegradable solution, worked well. Um, but what has surprised me here is when there's quite a lot of water coming into the boat very quickly, just how it invokes a, a, a certain degree of panic even under these control conditions. So the watchword is get the lot leak stop, stopped quickly to buy yourself some time, then you can cope with the cat panic and, and deal with the situation. So I've learned something here, definitely. Brilliant. Um, well, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. It's been, been a good day.